Hello out there, welcome to the No Shit Cast. I'm your host, Matt Fraser. Woo! Got the VIPs in the house, <laughs> bitches, tonight. Sitting in with us. Uh, they came to visit and hanging out in the studio with me, and I swore if I uh, ever got them all rounded up together again, I was definitely going to line the studio with them, and they're my children. And they're sitting here tonight uh, to bullshit with me about whatever we can uh, come up with. But most notably, some of the stuff that they're into right now, what's going on, without being super specific. Uh, my oldest son, Devlin. How are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing great. And my daughter, Amory. Hi. And my most uh, favorite pain in the ass, my youngest son, Kiernan, is uh, on mic number two. How are you doing, bud? Sup. Sup. So don't be shy now. We've been doing, we've been down here screwing around with this, and you guys have been getting used to it. So make sure you stay up there and yeah. uh, really uh, project that voice. Be confident, uh, your, as it were. Your intro voice sounds like you're Australian. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's like an inflection. It definitely is. Yeah. I had an inflection. I don't know where it comes from. It's just something Australia. I feel like doing. It's, you think that's what it is? It's definitely very howdy, mate. You know, Hello out there. Yeah. I'm pretty sure howdy is south, southern. Wow. Howdy south. partner. Oh yeah, you're right. Actually, howdy, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I don't, Boy, get, I don't know. I don't get Australian. Like I get that. like some sort of weird New York or New England sort of twist. I almost it. Jersey Shore. Like, how you doing over there? You know, oh, like that, that kind of thing uh. is where I'm sort of, where, that's the vibe I get from it for sure. Welcome to the moolahs. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss that, man. It's fun. It's fun being out here. So, but here it's not, it's not the regional New England accent. They come no. through the Southern or an Appalachian accent out here in the Midwest. Yeah. So that's kind of where. It, it's different. Um, you don't open your draws? No, the, no, there's no draws. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Devlin and Kiernan have both been doing uh, live streaming. It's one of the things we're going to talk about because you're going to bring me into this world of live streaming video game uh, content, right? This is a thing now. Yeah. I a lot of people are sort of into this. And uh, Amory is going to talk to us tonight about... Uh, you know, the shit that's been going down with you as far as like, you know, the education stuff. And you just had a significant life event that I want to get into uh, with I, you. It's not as significant to me. <laughs> it's not insignificant no, to you? No, it's not as significant to me. For what? whatever reason, it still hasn't hit me that it happened. Well, what she did was she graduated high school and got her associate's degree at the same time. <laughs> She's a nerd. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say blowing the bell curve for all of us Fraser men. I mean, this yeah, right. <laughs> damn it. I'm scratching my head over here. I'm like... really proud of you, but damn it, we really got to step our game up here, fellas. We're yeah. looking bad, <laughs> a little scared, really you know? fitting into that stereotype. Oh my god, don't even start. So anyway, uh, those are kind of the subjects we're going to cover tonight. So. Uh, who wants to go first, the boys, or do we want to let Amory go first? What do we want to talk about first? Do we want to talk about video games and live streaming first? I don't know. Erica, do you want to go first? Yeah, Erica. <laughs> I don't want to go first. All right, cool. Okay. So Then you, then Amory gets the choice uh, to, now she gets the chance to make fun of you guys <laughs> while you tell me what you uh, were going to talk about. Right. So anyway, That's going to happen anyway. So, so this is, a, what do you call it? What's the service you use? Because you're always like, um, that you used to do this. Twitch.tv. Twitch.tv. Okay, so yeah. this is a thing. And uh, now, what's the entry point on this? You have to have money. Is it a monthly subscription? No, no. You just need to have an account and have a stream software. And there's a free one that we both use called Streamlabs OBS. And it's, it's like brand new. It's completely brand new. And it it's, just came out of beta. It's brand new. So accessible. It's it's free. It, the, you can get themes, or you can make your own themes. If you're savvy enough. So Streamlabs is a very popular service that people have used while streaming. And it's for like follower notifications, donations, any kind of notification you want on your stream, how to edit your stream. They put that stuff as sources into OBS, open broadcasting software. Okay. And OBS and Streamlabs teamed up to make this conjointed all in one you're able to edit your scenes through this app without opening up a new browser. And it's the most easy, applicable, accessible, accessible application for live streaming in general. It's awesome. I love using it. And then you have your chatbot if you want to use that for song requests, which is a whole new application called Streamlabs Chatbot. chatbot. Yep. And you can make your own bot too. You just have to have another Twitch account, like an empty Twitch account. So mine's uh, Gemsis bot. 
you know, and you can have put commands. You can make your bot say stuff. You can do commands like how long you've been streaming. Uh, so the, the function of that is what? So that's so this is something that's happening beside the game stream window. So it's so it, it's like you're interacting with the people that are typing to you. It's, so it's yes, like, yes. Okay. It's mainly for chat interaction. So say someone so wants text to know chat that's happening yes. while the game is 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 being played and yeah. you're live streaming right. this content. So when people get really big and have like one thousand viewer is, plus streams, now this is literally people on computers watching people on computers yes that's yes. what we're doing here but it's becoming a, it's becoming a sport right i mean like e, the e-leagues i've seen this on espn e-sports. and esports yeah. and all this kind of thing it's so, really becoming a thing oh yeah e-leagues have been live streamed since they started they've been live streamed on mainly twitch but yeah. unless you're in like china and they don't have access to twitch or youtube they have their own streaming uh, platforms okay. right. that they live stream it off of. It's all being live broadcasted. It's like watching a football game. The difference, you know? though, the difference being that you don't have it, when with esports, they don't really interact with the comment section. With Twitch streamers, we interact with the comments and we while for, the, while you're yeah, live playing, streaming. yeah, yeah, yeah. while so we're people playing, people can like send you messages or like roast you or whatever. Yeah, you live gotta, off that. That's how it works. That's all. The that's stream. all it's about. They just they're just there to like flame you, like have fun, they, tell you how much they appreciate you. It's supposed to be a neutral community, and you can add chat rules. Like I'm not at all a fan of my friends backseat gaming me. Like oh, you should have done this. I'll learn that for myself. Okay. Right. So I'll put that in my chat rules, like, "Hey, no backseat gaming," and then no obviously, obviously the same. Shut up. <laughs> same, uh, like, don't be racist. Blah blah blah. Okay. That kind of like ground rules. No swearing. No, there's yeah. Okay, elaborate on that. That's a big deal in this, right? Is the no swearing thing? Because I get in trouble with you guys <laughs> when I jump on, and it's like, oh yeah, I forget because I, well, I do this, right? I, right. Yeah. This doesn't have as near as many restrictions because well, i'm sure you're allowed to say like yeah retarded. I can pretty much, we can pretty much say whatever we want right but um but my goal here is to not be offensive right all right so uh, i i choose to try to choose i'm not i'm certainly not perfect but i certainly try to choose language that would not be specifically offensive to say race or religion or sexuality or anything like right, that that's, right. not, that's not the goal of my show beyond that though i want people to be able to speak in their you know, the way they normally talk when they're talking right. to me because I want them to be comfortable. So if that includes profanity, I don't I don't really care. What I want is an honest conversation. Right. You know? On Twitch, you but can't yeah. you, you have to follow a, a rule set called you know, a terms of service, like note, right? That you get at before anything that you sign up for. Well Twitch has the same thing. But it, you actually have to pay attention to it because it tells you what you can and can't say. You can't say the N word on stream. Even is and now it's even if you it's in a song. So if you like a rap song, really? Yeah, I think so. And Cause... you can't say something's gay. You can't say something's retarded. You can't say pussy on stream. That that one's very iffy. It depends on who the streamer is because um, Twitch mods are also very biased. So oh yeah. If it's a really popular streamer who's verified with Twitch, is a Twitch affiliate, like, has been with Twitch since the beginning, and they say the word pussy, right? It's not a big deal at all. But say me and Devlin said it on our stream, and we had more than 10 viewers, and one of us reported it for, reported us for it, we're gone for seven days. You were banned. Yeah, there's a there's a guy. Which, no, there's probably a limit too. Like if you get so many, then they're just like you're done. Kick you off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now what? Now what does what does one require to to start one of these accounts though? Is it just an email account, or does there some it's sort just of just an email account? So they can turn right around and certainly create another account and then continue doing it until they get reported again. However, see that would be a really tough way to build a follower. The um, thing is, is once you get banned on Twitch. You're not allowed to be on any other Twitch streamers broadcast. You you have these streamer houses, like my personal favorite streamer houses. Oh wow! A place called so Offline some, TV. Yeah. Okay. And one of them got banned for seven days. Yep. And it was a justified ban. He's like, I understand, but he had to stay in his room while everyone else was streaming. He couldn't appear on their broadcast because then that person would get banned as well. 
Wow. Okay, yep. so they're, they're pretty strict about this. Very, so, very so, okay, strict. So talk to me about the community then. I mean, how do you guys find the community on there then? Do you find it to be very... Uh, it's that, hard to come that, across. That it's working, that, that, that doing this has removed a lot of the aggression and a lot of the like crazy stuff. Yeah. People uh, still here. find their way around it. Like, they really do. But um, if you get a random viewer in your chat, which for me and Devlin doesn't happen too often because the, We're very small. the way they label it is via viewer account and the more or less viewers you have depends on where you show up in the browse the okay. less yeah. viewers you have you're way at the bottom you have to scroll all the way down the more viewers you have you're at the top you're more popular so you do get the 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 white knights every so often that come yeah. in and they're like hey i'm here for the little guy and we appreciate you right you and know? just want to so what is that they just they just they kind of search out shows that are yeah just starting off yep. and things like that and they and deliberately go in love there are twitch thing. communities for path to affiliate which is a milestone you got once you start accepting subscriptions in bits okay Bits is twitch form of currency where like one bit equals one cent basically sure okay and twitch makes some of that profit okay so it's very it's good in that sense for twitch but they want to have a trusted streamer to make profit for twitch so that's where the affiliate comes in. You have to have 50 followers and three average viewers over 30 days. Holy cow. Yep. That's Which a lot. is nothing. Yeah. It's it's no. a lot for me and Devlin, yeah. but it's nothing yeah, later on. You guys on. are still sort of in the alpha beta phase of figuring out how you want to structure everything and kind of going through the learning process of getting right. this all put together right now, right? I mean... You're oh, not yeah. like officially launched with a web page and a persona and all this kind of stuff no. behind it as well. So you're still, yeah, you're still kind of, I would say what, you're, you're feeling, you're putting your toes in the pool, kind of figuring right. out how it all works right now. Yeah. I'm uh, still, yeah. they're still trying to kind of figure out their brand and like how to express themselves in like the most characteristic way that is authentic to them. Sure. Yeah. I've had people tell me, like, just my coworker in general, he looks at me every time I bring up streaming and he goes, you're god-awful boring. So I'm still trying to, like, figure out how to, like, present myself while I'm playing these games. Because when I'm playing League of Legends, I'm very zoned in and focused. Until someone talks to my chat, then my eyes are like, oh, someone's talking to me, gotta interact so I don't lose my viewers. Yeah, right. that's, the, that's the issue with that I have, is I, I, haven't, I have a problem with being entertaining unless someone's there right because i i, like, I unless can't. someone's physically there in the room kind of thing or unless someone's in the ch in the in general okay it could be either because like for me if i have someone well, on you the don't call feel like you're talking to anybody so you don't say anything kind of i get kind of bored thing. you know personally i it's not like i get bored enough to not play because i can play and stream it however i find it's not entertaining unless i'm really good at the game you know uh if if i have someone in chat being like I had someone recently that looked at me and was like, you look like Sean Mendez. And I was like, thanks. And then he was like, you're welcome. And I told him my song request was on. So he played the Sean Mendez song and I found that funny. Okay. And then he, uh, then they, uh, followed me, which was great. So all in all. So, but like, like situations like that really help fuel the stream. Like comments are not streams, not anything without comments. Also, you have a lot of viewers, then you can be, you know, entertaining on your own. Yeah. Like the people I watch are the Game Grumps and they have, they do streams. So. Sometimes the boys will, they'll bring me in and be, or I'll come into their room and be like, Amory, I'm streaming, come hang out with me. And a lot of the time when that happens, I'll like try and interact with chat because they're too zoned in on their video games. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll stream with Devlin. Mainly Devlin. Yeah, it happens a lot <laughs> with Devlin. Although sometimes I'll come and sit down with Kiernan and just assert myself, just put myself yeah. in that now situation. The, the, when you say this, do you mean physically in the room or through the, the room. through the chat uh, in the no. game itself? Physically. Yeah, I don't. I'm a mod on both of their streams, I believe. I don't yep. do Twitch very often. They'll be like, hey, I'm streaming, and I'd rather be there in person as okay. opposed to on the phone. But so that, the having, that, having that organic presence then helps to, to you sort of egg them on. And, and do you find yeah. that that improves um, the view counts or whatever? However, Now, what's the metric with which you measure? It's followers, right? It's how this metric measures. Not viewers, like viewers. Viewers. It's okay. viewers. I have nearly 200 followers, but I still only get like 
two viewers per stream, you know? Same. It depends on who's a loyal follower. And they have to be on while you're doing this, correct? Right. So yeah, that's that's why physically watching. Yep. I swear, 90% of American live streamers live in California. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Because of time zones. Yeah. Makes it's sense, yeah. The yeah. most convenient place to live. For that, for that, for doing right. that. Also, sure. they make mad money so they can just <laughs> live in California. Yeah. House, you Malibu, know? beach yeah. house kind of thing. <laughs> All right, so, okay. LA. So, is there a component to this with which is that it gets recorded and then someone could subsequently view it later and then that still continues to get you views? Yes, in a sense. There is a way of that happening. It's a, y- you could set up VODs which are your stream videos that videos you save. Videos on demand or something like that? that Pretty right? much. Okay. But the VODs are only up for so long, about a month, I think, max. And at, over time, Twitch goes in and starts muting certain parts of the stream. I don't know why. Copyright claim. Oh, really? So I lis- there's music in the background. Yeah. Things what like that. Happens, that makes sense. Right. What happens is... I think is YouTube's doing that, too. YouTube does... Or they're it's demonetizing worse. anything that's got... Uh, copyrighted music yeah it's worse on youtube than it is on twitch because twitch you can live stream copyrighted music but later on in the vods they'll mute that out they won't even take down the video or anything they'll just mute it so if you're talking they leave that in and you can hear the music in the background while you're talking but as soon as you stop talking it gets that song gets muted out or do they just mute mute everything everything gets muted out it's where that song is playing oh wow oh that's gonna suck youtube they sometimes they'll leave the video up sometimes they'll take it down but when they leave the video up the youtuber doesn't make ad revenue yeah so the cool thing about twitch is it's all live but that's also really dangerous because yeah. people don't have filters. Sure. So you can well, that's, get that's the like, um, but that's got to be part of the appeal is that you could watch a human being have an entire train wreck live on the internet. Oh, you know, and and, and nightmares. People fall, especially when they're doing something because I, you know, how stressful people get or how stressful it can be uh, times for people to play video games. I have so, a friend, and you, watch you can come on fucking glue. <laughs> you can, <laughs> like, oh, this is happening live. Oh my you gosh. can clip things on Twitch and create its own, like, I think top thirty second video. And my friend Nick, I'm not saying his gamer tag or anything. I'm not trying to like put him out there, but <laughs> he did really bad in a part of a game of League. <laughs> and did what us Twitch streamers call baby rage. <laughs> oh my gosh, did he actually? What did he do? Like baby rage. Baby rage. I've heard of rage quitting no, or someone yeah. so, pissed and then just logs out of the game. But what's baby? Baby rage? rage originates from a Twitch emote where it's an angry baby face. A lot of our Twitch lingo is from our emotes. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So baby rage is when someone just gets insanely upset over nothing. You know, so he just died once in his game. Big deal. But he like threw his headset through his chair, you know, so and this was all record because because another component of this when you're doing oh, it yeah. is there's a video of you guys sitting at your computers, right? That gets yeah. that's in, superimposed into the stream somehow. So you can literally see this person doing this while they're so you can see the person who's playing the game as they're playing it and then you can see oh, yeah. their screen, right? Like right. what they're doing and in, in whatever game it happens to be. You guys do a game called League of Legends a lot, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. So this is just one thing that you could do. But there's people that do like all the video games like Overwatch and, and all this kind of stuff. Oh my right? gosh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You can physically see this person. So when they're having this meltdown, you can hear what they're uh, melting yep. down over and you can see them having this meltdown right. at the same time. They, if they have a face If cam. they have face cam. Oh, so not everybody does the face cam. No. no. Mom won't okay. let us have a face cam. I can do face cam. Well, that one's 18. Yeah, because you're an adult. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. So I do face cam. You can't buy cigarettes and you can't drink alcohol, though. So right, Exactly. There you go. <laughs> you also can't rent a car. Trust no. me. <laughs> you can't rent a car. Yeah. You. Trust me. I'd have a face cam. It would make my viewers go up like so that. So that helps. That, that yeah, helps. So that, that That reinforces that whole thing like you were guys talking about earlier. That you right. have to have like a genuine connection with your audience. Yeah, the face cam really helps them understand like personality because it introduces the idea of body language and how they react. And and it's not because bo- even though voices are very powerful, you can see a lot more through the way that they express things in their body. That's why face cams are super important. Also, it kind of satiates the curiosity on what this person looks like. Yeah, and satiates. I'm, I'm- 
Yeah. Big words. That's a good I'm word. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's got, listen, damn it. She's got her <laughs> college education. All right. Yeah. And she's probably right. <laughs> I'm the Fraser that's behind. I'm sorry. So, with she, that. She's got more education than I do. <laughs> I have more education. Ca- Oh, I have more education than this one. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little behind. But you're in college, so that's yeah. Okay. yeah. All, all you guys are going to be way more educated than me. With that being said about like facial, like body ling, well, body language in general. My friend Julian, um, last year he was teaching this class, and his students said that his voice has one tone, one emotion, but his face says it all. Right. Like it, it just. Oh yeah. It well, was. I well, was amazed because. 80% of communication, I, I don't know, this might be one of the things, it's a, it's a stupid factoid, it's not actually true, but I can remember hearing this and, and being in sales for as long as I was, right? 80% of communication is nonverbal. It's body language. It's, it's, That's exactly it's, it's it. tone. It's all these other pieces. So having that, uh, that. Uh, and, I, and that's the next phase with the podcast that I'm doing too, because, I, because if I want to ever have a real chance of monetizing YouTube, I've got to have video of the people I'm talking to in the studio and, and, and the video of us, of us, you know, it's got to be a part of it eventually. Um, go ahead. Em. That's a big thing that um, YouTubers now do. Like some YouTubers, they have their own podcasts and they'll put it up on YouTube, but they'll have the video of them in the podcast studio Instead yeah, totally of just Joe, the Joe sound. Rogan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally like a Joe Rogan model. I, speaking of Joe Rogan, when I was watching his podcast, I realized they're doing it through something like OBS. They had more than one camera for different camera angles. Sure they did, yeah. And they had a background editor saying, all right, I'm going to click this button and transfer to this camera. So <laughs> if you get big enough and have someone with that amount of patience to sit through your whole podcast and click that camera button when yeah. someone else starts no, talking. I, I think it's even more advanced than that now. Here's what I think, because I've seen some of this stuff, uh, this hardware that you can get to do this sort of home-produced live streaming. Because what you guys do and what I do has a, has a lot more in common than not. And, and uh, you know, I do a different format of show, obviously. But, um, but nonetheless, uh, the way this stuff kind of works now is I think that they have these boards that you plug multiple cameras into. And then that is tied into the mixing board. So it knows which microphone is, is talking, who's talking on which microphone. So what it does is if it hears, like right now, because I'm talking, it would put the camera on me. But as soon as somebody else started talking, it would flip the camera to them because it would pick them up through the microphone channel. Oh, so Logitech so I, Mice, this is super random and this is what my mind went to. Devlin's Mouse has a sound sensitivity thing. Okay. On the light of it, on the main light, the G, it shows different tone uh tones uh colors yeah of sound sound basically it's it's really cool you can go into the software you can edit it so that you can make a high pitch sound a brighter color and a low pitch sound a lower yeah okay p- like, so version of that color sound recognition so i'll yep. be playing i'll be listening to music and i'll see my my mouse go crazy with the sound it's awesome it's insane i think they could, i think um some of the new um like you, like you guys. So for microphones, you use some off-the-shelf stuff. You're not you're not doing something as elaborate as having a mixing no, board and all this. No, you're you're using like these called snowball mics or something. Blue like snowball. That. Yeti is the brand. Yeti. For, okay. Yeti. Uh, for some reason, I think that they're starting to incorporate like an A B switch into these, where when you're talking, it switches to A, and when you're not talking, it switches to B. So that would be like, you could do a two person podcast with that super simple, but I think it's so yeah. that you can get different. Cam- so as soon as you start talking, it like flips, flips the camera to your face. That's very and then when possible. When you stop talking, it flips to like a wide angle shot or something like that autom- automatically. That's, that's the point. Like, this is how crazy this stuff's getting though, man. It's getting so you can self produce so easy. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, my mic is lower quality than yours, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it, Works the same. It's fifty dollars. I've seen your streams. I mean, they're not the the qualities. There's nothing wrong with the quality. I mean, you're right in there. That's the other thing with doing this kind of stuff, right? Is it's so easy to get level with your with anybody that's already success super successful at it because the, right. yeah. the technology technology hurdle is much much lower. So I, it's a lot easier to do. I do got to say though, if anyone ever watches a live stream, do comment. Yeah, if there's no please. comments. Please comment. Come in and say hi. It really sucks to be alone. But but no, you have viewers. So the worst thing ever is this happened to me once. I maxed out at 20 viewers and no one was talking. I was like, 
there are 20 of you. How come you're not talking? You feel really alone, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And like you're just being watched and it's really creepy. It's horrible. No feedback, so no nothing. You don't know if anyone likes it and you're sitting there like, great, cool. All right. Um, What do I talk about? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because well, like. Um, uh, one sorry. of the hardest things I've found to do is a solo podcast. But, yeah. But I've had to learn how to do it. And I've it's, always. And it's not. It's the hardest thing. It's the hardest podcast to do by far. That doesn't surprise me either because imagine it like listening to a radio show and there's only one person speaking and it's almost like a newscast. Yeah. Um, it's not the easiest to make it flow or or give it entertainment value. Be organic. Yeah. You don't get that organic feel from just one person. That person has to be extremely experienced to be able to produce that amount of synergy with themselves. Yeah. Like look at Greg in the Morning Buzz. You okay, know? well that's a that's a radio show up, I, up in new up in uh, Boston, New England area. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, and they 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 do they do that well. They but they're also comfortable with each other because it's always the same people, unless they have a guest. And, but uh, to Amory's point, there's more. There's multiple people on there, so there's always something to kind of be um, talking to somebody about, you know, and getting sort of that organic. So how do you, how do you do that? I mean, uh, I'll, I'll let you. But how do you how do you guys? view that i mean what's the solution then to you're sitting in a room by yourself you're live streaming this video and stuff of, of an event that you're that you're doing this video game or whatever that you're playing what do you need to do then to, to keep that organic connection uh because that's what that's what people are looking for right between like the streamer and the viewers is yeah that, so a lot of it's just like saying what you're doing and it's like like giving out your strategy okay here's oh here's what i'm going to do now you know it's right. like that inner monologue then that you have while yeah. you're playing. So you just got to learn to sort of verbalize that inner monologue constantly, right? Devlin's insanely good at that. Oh, yeah. I I just can't for the life of me. I, I when I sit there and be like, "Oh, so I'm going to do this and this." I just it doesn't stick with my brain, but yep. Devlin just he's <laughs> The way I do it is I just I'll I'll go. I'll talk. <laughs> and then when I'll perform the action and say that's not what I was trying to do there, but what I was trying to do there was this, 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 and this. Oh, I'm going topside. You know, like League of Legends speak. So it's probably fun for people to sort of see you, see you fail miserably at what you're doing, especially if, if you're good, if you're like, oh man, I just got my butt kicked or whatever. If you're humble yeah. about it, I, I think it's, you know, human about it, relatable. If, if I'm like calm and I'm thinking, yeah. and I'm, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play through what I'm trying to do because I know how to focus. And then afterwards I'll react to it like, oh, that was neat. <laughs> you know? As a viewer, because I don't stream or anything like that, I just watch streams, having people, you know, express more than just verbally what they're doing, be more interactive in, like, tone of voice, like, their reactions in general, because if they have a face cam and they and they show more than just a shocked face, it's more entertaining, because I do watch people play League of Legends, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, I barely play the game, but if they are a really good streamer, I can get with it. And then I'll learn some more things about the game. And it's very hard for me to get into it if the streamer isn't into it. And that's also a big part of how streamers get big. So they could be super passing on like super insightful information, but if they're not sort of, uh, you, you're into not, it. if you're not, if they're not into it, if they're just very bl bland about it, you're not, you're going to move on. Right. There Definitely. Are, there is a certain kind of person that can be bland and be entertaining. And there's only one person I know like that, and that's Julian. I was going to say Julian. Yeah. yeah. Okay, who's this Julian? Is this, a, is this a famous person or is this, this someone? This is our friend. It's one of our friends. Okay. You met him. Internet friend. All right. So shout out to Julian, huh? Yeah. So, yeah. What's Hell his... What's yeah. his uh, he was the his, one with what's the... What's his online ID and stuff? Give him... I-S-I-A-A-C-E. I -A -A -C -E. Okay. Uh, he's he doesn't have any like, college social student, media. You know? Okay. Um, he has been programming since he since his last year of high school, and he's been one of my best friends online for as long as I can remember. Okay. And he's the one that I was saying his voice is one tone, but his facial expression just says it all. But he's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I got a. I we went to Comic Con one year with him, and we, this is somebody we, you met. 
oh, yeah. playing this game and sort of in being in this community, right? Yeah, That's how this friendship right. was made. Okay, you, you, you can Kier- touch on that later. Kiernan, yeah, Kiernan met him through a friend, and then I met Julian through Kiernan. And oh yeah, we went to Comic Con with him, and I'm I was so used to just hearing his voice, so I would say a joke, and then I felt like it wasn't going to register with him because I couldn't tell, I can't see his face until we were in the car, and I said a joke, and I looked at him, and he's smiling because he just doesn't laugh. So he's deadpan. Really. He's well, a, that's the term. Right? He's, he's laughing. Deadpan. I will I'm normally the one to make him like laugh out loud. Yeah, okay. but like every now and then I'll shoot him a Reddit post, and he'll go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll smile a little heavier, you know. So you just that's you're, you're killing him there, right? Yeah, he's just busting yeah. Out. yeah. But like, I'll shoot him something, and he will just die. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> he's a, I guess he's a very humble, awesome dude. But so he's really good at this, and so does he have a strong follower, a viewership, and is he's established no, that way? He or? does not stream at all. What he does is, as I said, he's a programmer. He creates. Oh, discord bots okay. and um yeah he has one of the top grossing uh discord bot for a game that we play called osu it's a rhythm game and that's where a lot of people know him from okay. he's relatively good at the game and um he decided one day in high school i'm gonna learn how to make a discord bot yeah and no, no, he's like super smart though, right? Insanely he's in, he's smart. like in a um like uh like you said, programming uh, uh computer, computer science engineering yeah, major. Yeah. yeah, he like builds a, a lot of people build their own computers, but yeah, this it's, is like what he does. Yeah. It's funny because and me and him are so close that like he'll sit around for two hours and listen to me and my father talk about being a millennial <laughs> oh really oh, yeah, that's right yeah. uh, the, this is uh devlin and amory's first time on the show but kiernan's actually been on the show before because you i'm and, and it turns out i think we we mislabeled you i'm not even sure you technically are a millennial I, right I, i'm no. not even sure i thought it's anymore. whatever the google whatever this week's google um uh, answer is we're a weird cusp. We're not because they're not necessarily sure. No one's necessarily sure on what when the millennial age ends and when I think it's Gen Z, Z. Y Z? Z Gen Z starts. Okay, so it's like a five year gap, but it happens after this time, and it happened there like Gen Z happens after this period, and Gen mm-hmm. and millennials happen before this period. But then there's this gray, big fat gray area where all three of us fall into because it's kind of like um, '90s kids. We technically count as the '90s kids because all of the reruns were happening while we were still kids. So we were watching right. everything. We were getting cultured just like a '90s kid. Yeah, like but we were Friends also... is really big with you yeah. guys. Yeah, and these kind of shows. Yeah. Are huge. But we were also growing up with all the stuff in the 2000s. So we're kind of like uh, tweeners, van- vanilla and chocolate ice cream. We're tweeners. A yeah, you guys are uh, what do they call it? Ne- you're ne- it's Neapolitan. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So who's the strawberry flavor? Nobody May. likes the strawberry flavor. That's Devlin. Devlin. <laughs> yeah, it's Devlin. <laughs> Poor so Devlin. I love the strawberry it's flavor. He's the oldest. I do too. I like I like a Neapolitan. Anyway, <laughs> I swear it's because he's he's the oldest. So let me ask you this. So this is um this is a unique thing that's not that okay. So unique in the sense of I'm an old fart, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this whole concept of people now, um, and I I I participate in it. You know, I built this radio or this uh, podcast doing the same thing, just putting content and things like that out there. Yeah. But you guys have never known a time without this. This is very. Uh, like for me, it's unique that we have this ability to do this because we didn't when I was your age. But now this is just something that you guys all have access to and have grown up with it. Now, how do you think that impacts your generation versus like my generation? I got hands up all over the place. So I'm going to start with Kieran and go. Ahead. I would just like to say before Devlin answers, is that earlier? Your daughter asked what dial up internet was. Well, to be fair, <laughs> I know what things are. Oh, I just so don't old. name. I don't. I don't know the names of them. So if you explain to me what dial-up internet is, I'm like, I remember now. With a but modem, I just, you die, yeah. Yeah, I lines, don't. Sorry. I don't remember the names of things because if it's if, not, if you can look in, it up, yeah, it's not imperative bother. to me. Yeah, it doesn't, right. it doesn't Amen, matter. Sister, yeah. I feel you. I do the exact like, same I, thing. But it doesn't need to waste right. space in my brain. I'm not going to get right commit now. any yeah. energy to that. Yeah, it's, go ahead, Devlin. I, I I remember floppy disks. I, yeah. I do. Yeah. I grew what? up with floppy disks. Yeah. yeah, dad had floppy disks in his yeah. office when I was little. Yeah, I I remember. Do you remember your Barney doll that we used to hook up? Uh, to? Oh no, no. no, no I, remember I remember you telling that. me about it though. Yeah, that thing stories. was creepy. Hello, yeah. hello, Devlin. Devlin. <laughs> <laughs> but it would say your kid's name. You could program it to say your kid's name. 
I looked that um, up. You can install the software, and you could plug this Barney into the US. This is old school. I actually was—I don't even think it was USB. It might have just been like serial or something. I mean, it was like really old school stuff. I this quickly before I was going to the point I was actually going to talk about. Okay. I looked that up, and I saw a video of it, and it's just as creepy as you said it was. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the what were we talking about? <laughs> The impact that this kind of ability to just to social socially stream and to have this online presence persona. Yeah, so I, you're right. We grew up with that. I grew up with that. Uh, and when we were living in New Hampshire, the the people I watched were all YouTubers. Mm-hmm. And I, from that point on, you remember me telling you, I'm like, I want to do YouTube. Yeah. I, I just yeah, want to be a at, YouTube you've been star. Adamant about it for years, right? Yep. And then it just swapped to Twitch because I'm like, this is easier. <laughs> and YouTube sucks because of the algorithms. And I okay, so let me put this into retrospect or vision for you guys. I was born in 2003. Right. YouTube came out in 2005. So you've never known a time that I you can remember. Don't without remember YouTube. when YouTube came out. So I've it's been just living. Always been there. Right. right. I've been living with this stuff for as long as I can remember, looking stuff up on YouTube and finding my entertainment from there. So but I'm not just your entertainment though, your knowledge too. My knowledge you learn as well, a lot right. of stuff from there. You from, sort of, you guys Yeah, you, you lean on that. Like STEM YouTube channels like Vsauce, mm-hmm. one of the most educational science YouTube channels out there. One of the most memed ones too. <laughs> as well, yeah. Another big thing about growing up with the internet is that we don't perceive the dangers that a lot of our parents do we grew up with it it's just natural to us we don't under also because we were kids we do, don't have do you think these. that do you think that that you don't perceive it or that you just already understand how dangerous it is and you sort of incorporate that is it a night is are you naive do you feel that I your think, generation's naive well, when we were younger because we grew up with it like when we were 11 12 and we were trying to go on youtube and you were like no that is off limits we didn't understand why it was off limits in that case we were naive because we didn't understand that there are other things than what we just want to watch on youtube yeah right so when we would go on youtube we'd just watch what we wanted to watch but because of youtube's algorithms you can stumble upon something that's not necessarily well, kid friendly and, and, oh. and, 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 and youtube was nowhere near as policed Oh, exactly. Then, yeah. As it is now. Even still, bro. Recently, there was an <laughs> outbreak about this this Ugh. sculpture that was created by a Japanese man called Momo. It was, it I don't think the sculpture called, was called, called Mother Bird. Mother Bird, and it was a really creepy statue. And recently on YouTube Kids, because it has its own platform for children, and they they pe- Peppa Pig's on it. Um, there's some uh, some other kids shows are now on YouTube Kids. Okay. And these children would watch it, and in the middle of the episode, someone has found a way to hack into the video, put the image of Momo, and have a creepy voice play over the image and tell the kids to, like, uh, kill your parents or or destroy leave this. Leave the burner on. Leave the stove on. You're kidding me. Or, nope. And don't tell your parents, otherwise we'll and come after them. Because of the internet, this went viral. Like instantly. That, and it got shut down instantly. But that's a good thing. Right. Yeah. It's a good thing, but there was only like one or two accounts of it being reported too. So you got to understand that like some mom may have just been like, ah, I'm just going to take it for granted. Like, oh my goodness, it's definitely something that needs to be put out there. It is definitely something that needs to be put <laughs> out there if it's true. Um, I'm not going to say that the mom oh, did it okay. because so, she so was a PhD it, it, doctor. It's just that you're saying that this is this is some, this is a story that it's, it's a not story. Been pro- it's no, it's not been proven from what I, I understand. It has been proven, and p- mm. the reason being is people uh, people have done reactions of going on YouTube Kids, finding these specific videos because they have lots of views on them but at they, the time. So they actually have the videos. Yes. But what we don't so so they have the, the that there was an account associated with it. Da, yeah. Da, 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 all of this you kind can, of information. You can watch the reactions. You can watch the YouTuber reactions yeah, they, to it. So they yank them down. But they, yeah. they have been pulled exactly. down. Yeah. The only once they're gone, no one can validate whether they were ever actually there or not. Exactly. Unless you watch the reactions, because right. those are still up. Okay. Reaction okay. videos. Yeah. Are oh, up. yeah. Because, like, the the week after it happened, I looked it up, and people were like, Momo challenge. I'm like, oh, great, it's a challenge. Y- yay. But they, uh, they actually, from a week prior, for me looking at the video, they actually had the reactions of it. YouTubers wow. were doing reactions. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that, and that, so... So what you're getting at, though, is that, Am, is that then your generation now has sort of been 
th- this danger has just sort of always been there. It, it's yeah. new to us, but it's not new to you because you've never known it any different. It's kind of probably exactly. it, 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 because it's cultural for you. Yeah. So yeah. do you think then that makes you very critical and distrustful of most of the information you get off the internet and that you, that you tend to be more biased towards not believing things 100 percent. a really? lot of yeah i'll watch youtubers and they'll endorse certain brands like there are clothing brands shein zomway um f- something that starts English. with an s or something like that and mm. they're basically sweatshop clothing okay. things um these clothing items they're really fashionable in the pictures they're really cheap so it it you know it appeals to the younger audience because they're cheap they can save money on it but it's still fashionable the thing is is you don't necessarily know how reliable these things are so whenever people are endorsing things and i'm like that's pretty cool i'm gonna check it out i will go on safari on my phone i'll go on google on my laptop i'll look up other people reacting to it especially smaller youtube channels because they're not gonna cut out any of their you know stuff because they're not getting endorsed by these brands a lot of people that I watch, they're big YouTubers. They're getting endorsed by these brands, so oh, they have so you to feel be that, cool about this brand yeah. because they're getting money. So you from feel it. that there's 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 influence being bought. One hundred percent. So it's very holy cow. It's, it's a different brand of community, and because of and that, I, a lot of it is is I have to cross check my information. Are you guys the same way? Do you are you super critical? Sometimes. Of- Some well, you, okay. Sometimes is a big brush. Man. <laughs> critical of like. You uh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the um, I I I watch people that only that and I that I believe in what they they endorse. So they whatever they say, I they'll 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 do a advertisement, and then later on on a different video or something like that, they will say I only endorse uh, things that I believe are truly good you know so uh crunchy roll is an anime streaming app and people endorse crunchy roll because it's it's good it, it works so when you say people you mean like a lot of people a lot, a lot of people of, and that's so you if you if you see somebody endorsing something and they're the only one doing it you're not keen on that until you sort of hear a buzz about it or hear multiple people kind of or if i've already heard about something from that person a lot okay. i'll just go i trust you man Oh, you know? so if the if you've established a relationship with sort of a relationship with of trust with them because you've of the other things you've seen them endorse and the way they talk about things or whatever that yeah. you build a confidence with them as a source of information then yeah yeah because in this weird right because what you're basically <laughs> telling me is that if if you don't have some sort of personal connection to them you're not you're t- you're gonna not like you're not going to necessarily trust them or trust the, uh, trust the information that they're giving you. Right. I, I, I'm talking about content creators. I wouldn't have a personal connection no, with personal, any, uh, that, 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 that you, tr- you've built a, um, uh, I'm not, I don't mean that you're like calling them on the phone. No, yeah. your Buddies. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you have a connection with them, that you, something about them resonates with you that you find yeah. that you can find them trustworthy, but that's happened yes. over time. Oh yeah. And multiple exposures to this, person uh, right through their through everwater content media that they provide right yeah so what i'm getting at is that's really bizarre because everybody's thinking that the internet's actually isolating us from each other and what you're telling me is you actually have to find resonance with a with someone that's on the internet before you even believe anything they say anyway well it's like with you and your your viewers right yeah. if you ever come out with like Oh, I'm I'm supporting uh this microphone brand because right. they just gave it to us and we've been using them for about a week People have been listening to your podcast and go, he's an intelligent guy. I like him. I'll check out this mic brand. Well, see, you're, you said I'm an intelligent guy. So right You're there, an intelligent you, guy. <laughs> I'm already lying. I'm already well, lying. Well, okay. So <laughs> we're that. <laughs> go ahead, Amber. To bring it back to something probably more that would resonate with you. You know when you listen to a band and you think the music is good, you do some research on the people in the band. If they are not good people, will you continue to no, listen to their music? No. Yeah, the it, it definitely sours thing. me. Yeah. Def 100%. I don't listen to a lot of bands. They may have decent music that I can just, you know, I'll listen to if it's on, but when when they're just not good people and one of their songs come on, I will flip the radio station. It does not matter. <laughs> well, okay, so that's so that kind of gets back to the point, right? Then that 
Um, the, the impression, especially with people my age and older, is that the internet's ruining everybody. It's making it so that we don't <laughs> we don't talk or that we can't communicate, and it's making and everybody believes everything that's on there. And what you're telling me is that <laughs> your generation don't trust anything, and and that you have to find a resonance with that the the content provider. Uh, so they have to kind of like build a level of trust with you, and that and that's being genuine and not being fake and not be and not ever yeah. being caught sort of being. Uh, and untrue or improper to their, you know, if you get if you get the sense they're being bought out, that's going to turn you off, right? It's called sellout. I, I just want to uh, put out, even if they're not like some big content creator like me and my and my buddy Julian. Mm-hmm. I knew him for like eight months before we met each other. Okay, and something about him I just trusted. Yeah, and you know you just well you're online talking to these people for. Long, long periods of time. time. I mean, right. you're building. For, I mean, a lot of friendships have been built uh, on the internet playing video games and things like right. that. That's undeniable. Yeah, okay. and it's hard when like your parents are like, "Oh no, you can't meet people on the internet." Well, okay, because... well, when you're under the age of eighteen, it's still. St- oh wait, I'm going to go meet this person. What, what's right, going on? I was kind of so like a there little. Has to be a de- skittish. Well, like, it's on guard. it's the same thing with like the online dating community too, right? Right. You yeah. Be smart about this shit. You know, you just don't. I don't have to believe. Don't believe everything anybody tells you on the internet. But you guys are sort of. That's what I'm saying, though. You're sort of already. Uh, that's it, all baked in already. It's like street smart, basically. It's internet smart. Yeah. It's a new version of street smart. I do really want to share the way that Julian first met us, though. <laughs> I really have to share that. So mom's it was great. Mom's sitting on the front porch, and we already knew Julian was going to come in around a certain time. You know, he's a very punctual guy. And he's a very responsible he dude. He made an itinerary. He he wrote up an itinerary of where we we're going to be at what times, specific like, times. To the minute, like yeah, 4.38. Exactly. <laughs> he even had arriving at our house on the itinerary. And the first thing he did was he came out with the clipboard. Me and him start, me and Kieran started laughing because it was awesome. We were like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Because mom usually has so many questions. You know her. She has so many questions. So as soon as he came up with the clipboard and he was like, hi, are you... um?" are you their mother? And then she was like, yeah. And he's like, okay. Unclips one of the itineraries and he gives it to her. She's like, let's say itinerary. My phone number will be on the back. And we're just sitting there like mouth open and mom That's sitting right, there. Because he's in college. I mean, yeah. you, when you guys met him, you were, you were both still in, um, well, Karen's still in high school, but you were still in high, you weren't in college I was like, yet. I was converging into college. I was and, the summer just, before. Just, okay. So, so yeah. And then here's this college kid that's like, Hey, I want to go hang out with these guys. Cause I met him online playing a video game. And, and yeah, and yeah, I can understand a parent being like, you, wait, "You're gonna do what?" Yeah, but <laughs> she, like, she said you nothing. Again? The fact that he just he's like a, he's like a 48 year old college student. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 time out. <laughs> yeah, no. But no, he's he's in his 20s, or he's yeah, uh, he real just early turned 20. 21. Okay, he's right, turning okay. 22 in December. So when you met him, he was like 19 or something like that, right? 18 or Actually, 19 or 20. He was 20 when I met him. Okay. Or when you, or when he you, had when you just got introduced 20. to him on on yep. on the, this game. So anyway, go ahead. It I'm was re- it was just really impressive because I hilarious. looked at him in the car and I said, "If you ever wanted to see my mom not have any words or questions, that was it. That's not <laughs> that does not happen that often. <laughs> that was perfect. He'd be flattered that he's we're a talking pretty, about him. I talked to him too. He's a <laughs> yeah. really interesting guy. He really is. Yeah, he um, is. I think I frustrated the shit out of him because I was I was <laughs> oh, more no. wanting to have fun and goof around, and, <laughs> and he seems like no, we are playing the game to win. You know, he's very regimented. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's just how well, he is. He's very focused. I didn't so, get the sense that he was like upset. Uh, no, like no. he was mad at me. He was like, no. you know, pissed off and <laughs> fart. But uh, no. yeah, I was definitely in a goofing around I, I've, that night. I've picked up his mannerisms when we play league. I don't. I rarely talk about other things when I'm playing League. I talk about the game and I talk about content in the game. Right. I'm like, oh, blah, 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 top lane. Gotta be careful. Yeah. But when I start going off track, like talking about our Discord bot, he's like really focusing on the game right now. You can't let, you can't like oh. go off track. There. Talk about the 5v5 you guys had. I was, I was in the room. Which and- one? Okay, there so are five versus five. Yes, yeah, so there are five people on each team. We, ha- we had so. Kiernan had a group of friends that he was like, okay, this is my team, this is your guys's team. Created a custom game, and that? yes, he was because oh yeah, yeah, he was in it. You guys were in your own personal call. I was in the room, and he goes, okay, and he and he was being very polite about it. He said, anyone who's not in the call please don't speak we want to focus on our game and talk about this plan and i 
and I respect Julian. And I said, okay. Immediately, I was like, I'll just be quiet. And I watched the game, and it was fantastic. You guys won, right? Yeah. We yeah. kind of hard carried. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all very much a game lingo type stuff here, but this yeah. is all very specific. So this is a thing about this game um, that's interesting to me because I hear you guys talk. Uh, we're talking. What's the name of it? Um, League of Legends. League of Legends. And it has its own vernacular, like entirely its own sort of vernacular. Explain vernacular. vernacular. It's got its own terminology. <laughs> ah, yeah. You yeah. guys speak in like these shortened phrases to each other, like 5v5 up top, you know, like all this kind of stuff. But you really got to, I mean, you know, five versus five makes sense. That's everything. Yeah, right. right. But you said top. That's, that's you basketball. wouldn't understand Pike and Jungle. So it's got, <laughs> it's got, but it all has to do. So you guys have boiled down this very efficient way of communicating this stuff. Um, that's Le- completely unique to playing this game. Le- yeah. Kind of does that for you. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember going from world of Warcraft to playing league and pulling aggro has been yeah, one pulling- of the biggest things that I just understood. It just clicked. Yeah. And also like uh, people were saying it's a dot. And I was sitting there like, okay. And they were like, a dot is a damage over time. And I was like, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, home. I Homies. had to explain. I okay, so some A-O-E. of it translates for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Spellcasters being squishy. Mm. Squishy is one of the things that transferred over perfectly. We kind of okay. say dot as burn yeah. now because of that. It's more just a fire effect well, here's instead what's of killing like a me. poison. It doesn't kill me. But one of the things <laughs> that's, really, that's really cool about this is I've, I hear young people now pulling this game vernacular. Uh, and terminology and stuff into like everyday but they're doing it with the, um, they're doing it you guys are also doing it with the text people will say lol oh, and things like this <laughs> yeah. and while you're talking to them well, where did that come from well that came from saying I'm laughing out loud while I'm sending a message or I'm typing something on a computer now but now it's actually moving the other direction now it's moving into like the way we actually speak and communicate with each other I'll, I'll do it very ironically and I'll start t- t- saying those things ironically and then I'll be streaming, and then something funny will happen. Like someone intentionally dies, right, in my game, and I'll go, lol, what was that? <laughs> lol what? But I'll say lol what, because he says lol what, Kieran yeah, says lol what. It's L-U-L-W-U-T, lol yeah. what. <laughs> and, and then I think about it and go, that was really well, dumb. Noob. Noob, noob yeah. Noob. I mean, well... Uh... Newbie. No, no. When I was in the military, we called people that were newbies. Newbies. So yeah. That's, that actually was a thing. I take that back. It's funny because the way Riot connect the game company of League of Legends, Riot, the way Riot connects with their audience is very on a almost personal scale. <laughs> because when you open up League of Legends, when I first registered my League of Legends account, the website said, "Welcome to the Summoner's Rift, newbie." I was like. I'm offended and also ready to go into battle. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, all right, I'm sure how can newbie, you bitch. do this yeah, to me? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Summoner's Rift is the name of the map, the main map you play on the in main League of Legends. It's the best game mode. We don't play any other game mode. Yeah. It's like there's team deathmatch of any other game. You, it's, it's there's Summoner's Rift. There's ARAM. Which stands all for random all mid. Which the map for that's called Howling Abyss, and the one that nobody plays, Twisted, Twisted Tree Line. <laughs> this is a three v three. Three v three, horrible map, horrible well, game. You guys play. can actually teach me how to play this because it looks interesting. The game looks like liquid chess. It's like it, it, it's, it's a, really it's a it's very it's, strategic game, but it happens very quickly. It has yeah. such a weird concept. It's like <laughs> chess mixed with capture the flag mixed with killing everybody. <laughs> yeah, but in a cartoony fun way. All right, so let's do this real quick. Uh, plug, you know, do your plug. You know, let people know how they can find you oh. and and plug your uh, your streaming. Um, you know, how how to, so it's on Twitch. Yes. And then what's your you know if they want to look you up, how do they find you? So me, Kiernan, you can find me at Twitch TV forward slash Rotoro R O U T U R O. Okay. Yeah, and if you click that follow and ring that bell, you will get notified every time I go live, and you can watch my live streams. Just come in his chat and say hi. Very cool. Please that do w- say hi. <laughs> um, for me, it's Twitch TV forward slash Gemsus J E M X A S, and the the same exact thing. And like I said, I can't stress this enough. Please talk. Please text. It <laughs> feels would... lonely otherwise. Because me and appreciate that. Me and Karen do this thing where we turn off viewer count. So we don't know how many people are watching. Every so often, I'll turn it back on. It but... kills your ego. 
Yeah. Because, yeah. like, if, if you already go in with the expectation no one's going to, yeah. you know, watch. You. And also, it really stops you from saying, please talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know? something. Well, I've been there, man. I've been, when I first started this podcast, like, the first 10, 15, like, nobody. One, two downloads. Now some of these things have, they you know, we're in the five, six hundred. But it was like, yeah. it's, it's, it just hit us so, it was like, why am I doing this? Nobody's like, the, you know, yeah. it's tough. You so, got to persist through. Yeah, and you sometimes do. you yeah. just don't have the knack for it. But yeah. you do just to have fun. If you got the personality of the sole of a shoe, it's probably not going to go well. <laughs> the right. most, so, you know, buy a book, <laughs> learn yeah. some stuff, learn how to talk. Da, 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 da. The most viewers or I ever get. School. <laughs> the most, yeah. right? The most viewer, viewers I ever get are playing console games it's yeah. not playing league because here's the thing league of legends is the number two video game on twitch number one being fortnite so and number three being yeah, overwatch a ton of people doing it then is the market's just or the, the field's just saturated kind of thing i play it for fun otherwise yeah. i'll play console games which get low lo, like have less people streaming it have decent amount of views and right. you get more traffic sure and that flash ba- flashes back to what I said previously about how the viewer count in the browse works. If you have less viewers, you're at the way bottom of the list. And if yep. there's so many people streaming, you're at the way, way bottom, bottom of, of the list. list. You yep. know what I'm so if, if you're playing something like Bloodborne like I was recently and you just are playing it to have fun and there's like probably 15 people playing Bloodborne, you're you're on that list of 15 people. And it's you can a see it in a whole so browser window. Yeah, it's yeah. very easy for people to find you then. Yeah, right? yeah. Very cool. So there's some good pro tips there then in that. It's kind of, if you're trying to get, if you're trying to build an image or build a brand, as Ann was saying, you know, uh, I think it was all, maybe off mic, but, um, um, you know, that that's the idea is you got to build that brand. So you, you just go out there and, and do other stuff. You keeps, you, keep, get you, keeps you in front of people. Speaking of brand, can can we real quick talk about how you got your username? The No uh, Shit Cast? Or, no. Or no uh, Rufus? Rufus. Rufus. I love Rufus, man. Yeah, that's a good one. That's like most clever out of Let's Mike touch on that a little. <laughs> it was a niece of my wife, somehow, our cousin or something, and she was this cutest little thing. We went to a party, and she kept say, asking me, hey, mister, what's your name? Hey, mister, what's your name? And I just was like, my name's Rufus. <laughs> just, and you know where it comes from? It comes from um, Rufus from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Have you ever seen the movie? You showed us it, yes. but it's been a while. Yeah, it's been the, so the guy, long. The, 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 he was the guy that was played by George Carlin, the, the comedian. And his name in the, <laughs> in the movie was Rufus. And I always liked that. And so it stuck. So it was weird to get 25 years later. <laughs> This kid's like, hey, mister, what's your name? So I started telling all the little kids my name was Rufus. <laughs> and it sort of stuck. So, hey, Rufus, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, and then when I started doing, like, online gaming and stuff, it was like, you know, enter a username. And I'm like, it's Rufus. That's yep. my name. Oh. Now, now it's turned into more. It's it's not only that, but it's like the Rufus Plays the Blues, which is where I put all my recorded yeah. music and everything. Yep. It's really kind of turned into sort of a weird nickname but it, i don't know that it's technically a nickname right because i gave it to myself like i don't think you're allowed I, to do that you so can do that we definitely right? gave ourselves it, rotoro and gemsus well those are oh, online yeah. names only though yeah. you don't but i'm like they're like, that's your online musicals. name huh that's it's, your online name it's your alias yeah i guess yeah. you're right you can do yeah. that if it started off with online like, I, I don't do the show as you know uh, this is rufus you know i don't do that it's, no, you know, no this is me kind of thing right but. All right, so let's switch gears here. So uh, okay. you guys got to watch a very significant event in your sister's life here this week. A pretty cool thing. And uh, let's get your impressions of uh, the accomplishment here being, again, that you know you graduated high school and got your degree at the same time. You don't believe it, but your brothers have watched you go through this. Um, <laughs> you got to brush that thought off your shoulder, Amory. <laughs> again, she's a nerd. <laughs> so you think that's it? I mean, did, did you did you guys? So, but you watched her go through this and put the work in, and and it was a, she a stressful, a and stressful journey for her. During school, we don't see her, not at all. No, she hides. <laughs> <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> Where's Amory? I don't know. Studying. Yeah, we're yeah. like, where did Amory go? She locks Bed. herself away. To- she does. It's great. It's, it's every so often, we'll see at the kitchen table, like, "Hey, it's been a while. How's a <laughs> how's a month in isolation?" So, Amory, how does it, how did this all come together? What let's talk about the program and and sort of this was a two year ago thing, right? When you when this sort of popped up on your radar to be able to have the chance and the opportunity to do this, yeah, yeah. So, well, I was in because I just graduated, not in anymore. 
Um, I was in Pathways. It was an early college program done by Mount Wachusett Community College. And um, I had heard about it because in my high school, I was in sophomore year, and I had started this other program in freshman year. It was called Healthcare Career Program. And it was an outreach program done by Mount Wachusett Community College. In sophomore year, um, the school system really took a turn, and it was not something that I was looking forward to because... It was going to be. Yeah, a you're lot. talking about the, the the high school that you yeah. were in. Um, you know, we don't name we won't name the town. But right. It, it, it just it, it, it was, was just terrible. So um, it was uh, due to poor poor money management. Uh, more okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And so because of that, a lot of the kids were like, oh, "I'm gonna leave this high school. I don't want to be here anymore. It's just terrible," you know. And so in that outreach program that I was in from the Mount in my high school, there was this one kid who was like you know what? I'm just going to sign up for Pathways. I was like, what's Pathways? And so my teacher, who is also um, in, she's an associate with the Mount. She works at the Mount. She told me what she knew about Pathways. I was like, huh, two free years of college, a guaranteed associate's degree. And at the time, I didn't know that. She didn't accept, she didn't know specifically what the program was. So I had gone home and was like, mom, there's this program at Massachusetts Community College. Uh, It's dual enrollment. Can you look into it for me? So she did. I remember the day that she was like, all right, we got to have a talk. She called you and you were like, you would be stupid to not do this. Right. Yeah. And so I had applied. (laughs) It was pretty pretty obvious to me. (laughs) Oh, yes. I had applied. The kicker was I had told no one that I had applied. I didn't tell any of my friends. I told my Italian teacher. I was like, can you keep this on the down low for me? Because I don't want anybody to know that I'm applying for this in case I get rejected. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up that I'm going to leave. I don't want to get anybody sad. And she did an amazing, um, oh, what are those called? Uh, uh, Like a referral? Yeah. Yeah, She uh, she gave you like a a recommendation. Yeah, letter 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 of recommendation. recommendation. She did one amazing one for me. I sent in my resume. Resume? No. My application to the program. Ended up getting an interview with her because it was good. And then I got accepted into the program. And um, it was pretty interesting at first. Um, We had to do a lot of team bonding at the program just to make sure that we would form a cohesive bond with everybody else. Because in college, something that's super important is being able to, you know, be able to turn to people when you're having a hard time. Oh, right. Find a support structure. Especially as a junior in high school, you're in this new setting that, that you barely even got used to high school. Now you're in something different. And it's just you got to make those connections. I think it's funny, though, because when you were like, nobody knows, I didn't know. I don't know about Kiernan, but literally we were in the kitchen and I'm chilling and she goes, yeah, I have a, I have Senora um, right now referral for me, and I'm like, for what? And she goes, for me going to Pathways. I'm like, what's Pathways? <laughs> she was like, the dual enrollment thing I'm doing. I'm like, when was I gonna find out? <laughs> I don't even think I found out. I just, oh, Henry's in college. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it didn't like, even surprise you then. No. That's kind of what you're saying. Yeah. So this was a big, I mean, so you were talking about this. This was kind of a big um, transition then to go from that really regimented sort of structure of high school uh, as a junior and then going and showing up for college classrooms where there would be people, probably it's community college, so there'd be people all the way up into, you know, certainly middle age that might be attending these classes as well too, right? So you were like around adults now in class all the time. And then do you, did the, did the, you were actually taking classes then with with other adults who were college students at the time, okay? Did the, did the instructors and the teachers and the professors and stuff, did they treat you guys differently? Um, or did they put the same exp- – I mean, obviously, they had to because you're a minor, they could, all right? But uh, you're under the age of 18. But did they put uh, the, a different workload? Did they uh, – you know what I mean? When it came to yeah. turning stuff in, did they treat you differently that way? So – we had cohort classes that we had to take as a group, as everybody who was in Pathways. We took a psychology class, and the other one was English for our first semester, and then I took three other classes. No, psychology, English, and FYE, first year enrollment. It teaches you how to be a college student. Worst class to take your first semester. That's something you're supposed to take the summer before. It's 
highly recommend taking that December before. It tells yeah, you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, oh, yeah. It, it was terrible. Like you <laughs> learn how to be a college student in that class, and doing that your first semester, you end up having it down pat. Like the, the, the third. Now, which week class then. was it again? It's, it's that's FYE. It's different. First for year enrollment. Enrollment. Okay. It's different for every college. Just to name something different, but okay. every college has this. This is how you college class <laughs> that you're supposed to take. <laughs> we need it. This is how you life uh, class. Exactly. It would be really cool yeah. too. It was the worst first one credit course i ever took and that was the only class i failed last semester well, it was you fail for... fye well the joke was uh... you failed the class wait a minute i want to make sure i get this clear <laughs> <clears throat> you failed the class in college that teaches you how to be in college what's, a, what's stupid about the class is it doesn't do that they advertise it at that and that's what i was expecting going in okay what it actually does is it goes Oh, this. What kind of learner are you? Oh, I guess I don't know. What kind of? Uh, how do you get along with people? Let's have a debate on being kinesthetic learning or auditory. And I'm like, this, this, what does this have to do with anything? Let's watch a video on uh, psychology. I'm like, that's not what this is about. <laughs> so I spent most of my time sleeping in that class. Oh my god! <laughs> and we did a we did a video, a group project video about it. Do you and have to take like remedial FYE? <laughs> is there like a remedial? No, like, I didn't have to that? retake it. Like, it was, here's it, the blocks. Let's play with these today. Well, how's that work? For me, it was a it was a, a free course that I got, so I didn't have to pay for it. So I didn't okay. have to redo it. It was okay. just something to just go through. But there was it was funny because my teacher. Did you not get the, but you don't get the credit. No, I don't get the one credit for it. <laughs> I was I was in I was in class. You were thinking, this is gonna be a layup. Shit, I'm already in college. I'm out of college, and then it's like, what is this crap? <laughs> There was a there's a project we did where the <laughs> my class already knows me for sleeping in that okay. in that that's specific great. class. That's oh, awesome, yeah. man. That's oh, yeah. a good good way. Because because we, it in college, we had an English <laughs> class before that though. It was it was early classes, by the way. Okay. So we had an English class before that I stayed awake through the whole thing. And then we got to FYI and like, well, time for nap time. <laughs> my teacher roasted me. Yeah. Can I say how my teacher roasted yeah, me? Yeah, I don't care. Go ahead. We were doing a group project, and it was a video group project, and I opened up asleep on the desk in the video. It, without hesitation, my video, my, my teacher. So wait, say that, wait, what happened again? So it was a group project, and okay. we we're supposed to t tell, like, give advice on to other college students just coming in about how to do college from okay. our experience okay. from that I get semester. It. Right, all right. So I, from, from my part in the video, I opened up with my head on the desk and they were going, we're rolling. And I go, I'm sorry. And wake up. <laughs> my, t my teacher without hesitation looks at me and goes, oh, just like in class normally. Yeah. I died. I melted. Because <laughs> the whole class started laughing, but I was like, oh, it hurts. But you were legit. You were just being honest. You were method acting, as I it was, were, right? You were bro, totally method on that. I was there. <laughs> Owning that moment, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're obviously having fun in college but <laughs> it appears so um so you go through this right am and your your what's your focus going to be what's you know let's talk about what it is that that you're sort of pursuing what's your arc here so for me i want to be a physical therapist and um that as of 2019 as of this year i've been wanting to be a physical therapist for some time now as of 2019, you need your doctoral degree to be a practicing physical therapist, which a lot of physical therapists weren't. They'd have masters, maybe even a bachelor's. And so those people would have to go back to school, get their doctoral to continue practicing as of this year. Oh, my um, word. And that's, yeah. is, wow. that, is, that, is that everywhere? Everywhere. That is so like the, the mandate to, of um, the nation now. When I had my knee surgery, right, I, yes. they, they, had, they prescribed me physical therapy. I showed up. The person that was... Yeah. Uh, taking care of me was not a physician that I'm aware of. I don't think that person had a PhD or mm -hmm. was a physician of any kind. I understand. I, I thought it was like a certificate kind of thing. Nope. Okay. So those people are the ones you're talking about. So all these physical therapy clinics, like all over the place, these huge chains of physical therapy clinics that do this stuff, especially for like elderly people and, mm -hmm. and things. Um, you're saying all of those people that are actually practicing in those places are going to have to be, get, be, become doctors. P Correct. get their PhDs to continue yeah. doing it. There won't be like any kind of grandfathering of them into the process. Or? So the way that they would grandfather is that if the company believes in them a lot, if the um, hospital believes in them because they do have doc 
do- um, physical therapists in hospitals, they will pay for them to go to college because they are of the caliber that they want to be. They want to keep. But this they can't person. work anymore, though. Um, no, what they would. I don't know how. Or is it going to be one that, of those things where you have to have a doctor and then so many people can be working directly under them as like practitioners kind of thing? Is there is there like a subcategory for it? No. So what happened was they put this idea into notion before 2019. So they gave all the physical therapists who were working uh, more than enough time to oh, so they get all know, their doctor. They, everybody yeah. knows it's coming. Yeah, they knew uh, it, it wasn't was like coming they just when got it was up happening. One day and went, yeah. Shit, I got to go. I'm going to so, have to work at Burger King. Yeah, something. exactly. <laughs> so I I believe they gave them a good four years. Um, okay. I think it started in 2015. Okay. Um, and this is nationally. This is national. Yeah. Okay. And so for me, I wanted to be a physical therapist, but I didn't necessarily know how to go about that during school and. When I was in the healthcare career programs, um, my teacher, because I wasn't in college yet, I almost called her professor, she <laughs> was talking to me because their, their purpose was to help get people that foot into like medical professions. Right. Just to help them, like, sort ex- of navigate expose that. them yeah. to, yeah, the health fields. And they were s- supposed to know more about them. And if they didn't, they would be able to find that information. Um, those, my teachers, they were the ones who told me that as of 2019, all f- practicing th- physical therapists had to have their doctoral degree. And so for me, it kind of just gave me, you know, a range of how long I'd be in school for. Right. But there are different... It sort of set the bullseye for yeah, you. Now exactly. I know where I got to go. So I want. I figured out that I wanted to be, like, seriously wanted to be a physical therapist uh, probably 2016. Okay. Um. And because of that, and they were telling me that, you know, you have to be a doctor technically for that. You have to have your PhD. It was more of a, okay, how am I going to be able to obtain that? Get my PhD. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, what's, what is, what is it underlying this desire to do this? What's, what, what's your motivation for, for, for taking, cause this is monumental. I mean, to get a PhD is nothing to, to laugh at, right? Oh, I mean, exactly. it's, it's something you, and you've it, been, you've sort of set your chart and you can see that there's. I have to go through this exact path, but what, what sort of motivated you to, to want to go down this route and, and put this kind of effort into doing this? So for me, I've always liked puzzles, putting pieces together, understanding how things work. Um, I'd take pens apart and put them back together just to see if I could do it correctly. Um, and so the human body is kind of that thing for me. I want to know, I like understanding and the human body understanding muscle groups, tendons, skeletal structure, all of that stuff is really interesting to me. And physical therapy brings in the puzzle aspect because um, what it does is it helps people who may not be able to use this certain muscle group, injured it in a sport, which is how a lot of physical therapists get interested in is because they were athletes, they got injured, they have, they had to go to physical therapy and they're like, wow, this is, this is really cool. Um, and that's how I ended up being interested in it. I got injured a lot. No, nothing serious, but I'd like hurt my ankle. I hurt my shoulder. I hurt my neck. No, you I was did like, comp- whoa. You, no, you, did yeah, competition you're, cheering. You're an athlete. Yeah. You're right. So this is, it, it comes from sort of that. No, oh, definitely. Yeah. So um, when it first started, I wanted to be a physical therapist. I wanted to help people learn how to, you know, be themselves again. And... Like give them a quality of get your regain your quality of exactly. life exactly yeah. because I wanted to be somewhere in the medical field that didn't have to deal with all the nasties of like, oh like blood and guts uh, and well, bodily fluids <laughs> blood doesn't bother me so much um, cuts and things aren't too scary bodily fluids is what gets it's me not, I'm not no you vomit I'm gone. Now, See don't, you later. now, don't you have to do like a uh, a rotation though, where you'll have to go through sort of that kind of stuff? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the path so or how the path works. But generally, physical therapy isn't included in med school because it's a different kind of med school. Okay. Um, so when you do clinicals in a regular med school, I believe you do have to go through the rotation. But for me, it's a straight physical therapy degree. So once of course, your I brothers get, are being jackasses oh, right now. Go, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I can I just point out that while she's all talking about all this very smart uh, oh logical gosh. stuff, I'm watching a Snapchat video of her stepping on bubble wrap, saying, "I'm turning 18 in a few days." <laughs> <laughs> 
Really now? Leave it to these two, Ram, yeah. to always put your feet right back on the ground. The next post is, trapped. The next post is, I found more bubble wrap. Hey, so, hey, bubble wrap is great. Uh, everybody loves bubble wrap. Oh, 100%. <laughs> So, t- so talk to me about this too, because this is something that's, uh, that you've talked to me about a lot, and it seems very dear to you. Is also the ability to work with people that have pros- that have lost limbs and need prosthetics, and and so there's an engineering aspect of this too that's very appealing to you. Oh yes, um, fun fact. It's part of that puzzle thing again, yeah, too, exactly. right? Exactly, because they're also not only ha- do they not have something that they're used to having, they have this foreign entity on them instead of what that they have to try to reincorporate. To. Into. Yeah, they have to rewire their brain brains and figure out how to use it. Yeah. So I want to be the person that teaches them how to use it in a way that makes sense to them because everybody is different. It makes it makes so you want to help them make that connection to yeah. this thing now that's going to be a part of them forever. For, yeah, for, make for, peace for with what happened because how would you feel if you got your leg just chopped off? I couldn't even imagine. Exactly. <laughs> couldn't even like, imagine. Like imagine how scary that would be. You're not at the caliber that you once were. Although a lot of people are able to bounce back from that and I believe a lot of that has to do with, you know, the ability of the doctor that helps you. So you just want to be part of that that sort of pu- uh, that 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 transition that helps people make that move from 100%. something trauma traumatic to being hey I think I can actually have a functioning fully healthy happy life this direction now yeah that's why I want to work that's with profound it. right I mean that's a big, yeah I take something that's a that's a tragedy and help somebody turn it into you know and to put their life back together yeah it is what makes them them now. That's, that's crazy. Did I raise you to be that way? I'm not I sure where you so. get that from. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I want to work with people who are just out of the military. You know, they can't be in the military anymore because they don't have. Right. You know, so um, I just want to work with them specifically because that's where the majority of, you know, amputees come from. Not mm-hmm. that it doesn't happen to other people because people do lim- lose yeah, car limbs accidents. from car accidents, yeah. cancer, um, just traumatic events in general you know crazy accidents but a lot of military people that are coming out and Mm -hmm. they're injured and you know a lot of them are scared because in the military they're doing a lot of really serious things yeah really serious things and some of them are getting limbs blown off some of them like that was their life Mm -hmm. a lot of the times military is are these people's lives Mm -hmm. and being discharged because they can't work it anymore and you know that's kind of scary yeah like yeah it's like it hit, now hit the reset button and by the way um you're gonna have to do it without the use of you know your, your full your full bottle you know, your full bodily functions right. that you had pr- prior you know well, that's really noble look at you like i said i did i raise you did i did, did i did i teach you that <laughs> who, who knows so that's so this so this was like a big uh, pathways program was kind of a big jump start for you yeah. because you're going to start college as a junior this year at 18 years old. That's I mean you're going in, and then so what is it? How many more years now from now to your PhD? Um, I think where you're going to college has like an accelerated program, right? For su- as, as your brother Kieran would say, super nerds because <laughs> someone <laughs> someone that's going to get their associates out of high school is of course going to do the accelerated program, right? So what what's how's this block out for you now so for me all of the classes that i took in my pathways program um they're going to apply to my junior and senior years of the major that i'm going into now which would be exercise physiology with clinical track clinical track specifically because that brings you into the health field okay um because you can do exercise physiology and go into many different um you can go into gymnastics you can go into sports sciences with that um I say gymnastics specifically because I'm a coach. Yeah. Um, But the idea is with what college I have now, because of the way that the exercise phys major is set up at my new college, all of the classes that I have taken are going to apply to my junior and senior years because all the classes that I have taken are going to apply as extracurriculars Mm -hmm. and things like that. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fill my freshman and June, freshman and sophomore year with sciences maths all that good stuff which is what i'm really looking forward to because i just got my liberal arts degree i'm not really a liberal person i like <laughs> i like cut and dry things my yeah. first math class was statistics it sucked 
<laughs> it was terrible. Well, it's not that I couldn't do it. I could do it just fine. It just... It was not fun. Too wishy washy for you. Kind it's of too thing. gray area. Yeah. I like doing math and knowing that what I'm doing is reversible and checkable. Statistics sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> I've, did you sleep through that class too? Or? I wish I did. <laughs> you're just. <laughs> the problem here, Devlin, is that you're just not nerd enough. Yeah, Ooh. no, I'm not. I'm not good enough. Apparently, you have, I'm not you nerd just, enough. Not nerd enough. You I don't just, fit I in. Don't, is 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 anybody that does good in college does good in college? Is, is anybody <laughs> that does well in college and automatically a nerd? Is that how that is that how that works? So, no, I mean, it's only because she did an accelerated <laughs> like. So, Graduating with her associates in her high school diploma is doing a whatever like <laughs> two year bachelor, three year doing doctors. physical therapy, yeah. being all noble and helping people. Yeah. like what the hell? Right? It makes me of sick. Her, what three point four two GPA? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, no. Uh, do you know how sad that make me? Ma- that make me? That made me. I got a C in history, U.S. history too. I take a that course. Class, a class I took sophomore year and got a B plus in. I got a C in in college. I had already taken that class. I knew everything that was to be taught in that class. Okay. Nothing that my professor focused on was pertinent to U.S. history, too. <laughs> Hence why I failed. It was you like. You didn't fail. You got a C, but that's. It's a, that failing. Was, that was because for you as a personal hits- failure, right? It's only failing because if I had gotten a B in that class, I would have a 3.6 GPA. I'd have a higher GPA. Right. Ooh. It, it hurts in the feels, guys. It, it really hurts does. me right here. Right no, it was ridiculous because I'm taking these tests, right? Stop laughing at me. It's absolutely, it was absolutely insane. I'd be taking my test, right? And no, he'd be like, oh, what is the book that we talked about once in class that's not like relative to u.s history too who is the author of this book i'm like what does that have to do with the civil war with like the the civil rights movement like what? me and amra had the same english teacher okay oh. <laughs> you want to say it do you want to talk about him to go back to what the you said name earlier, the name or the uh, no okay. obviously right. his name is to- mike for for this purpose yeah to go back to what you were talking about earlier on how if teachers and professors treated us differently if they knew if they knew of our age they would teach us oh so they don't know no they 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 gotta know no they don't know how old you are when you're in the class because unless we're they are pathways or gateways which is the other dual enrollment teacher they don't know you are brought into certain classes as a cohort. And if you are a cohort teacher, you know that this group of kids are still minors. Okay. They're supposed to be in high school. And because of that, my English teacher that I shared with Devlin, Mike, treated everyone <laughs> in my class like a four-year-old. The women had a one-minute bathroom break. We couldn't be gone to go to the bathroom for longer than can, a minute. Can can four year olds go to a bathroom in one minute? No, <laughs> we were uh, we were new... treated like I don't know. We so had so to... you're saying that, that, that he, but he didn't teach he didn't treat didn't. Devlin's nope. class that way. No, nope. so here's a, no actually no that's not true. They, he did. Okay, <laughs> it was so sad. He was less obvious about it. Though. Yes, he would call us out if we stood up to go fill up our water bottle. It was so sad because like we um all the issues she's had I've had with with this teacher he he. he he also the main issue we had was he got off topic, you know. Oh, Can't the you, point for us was to get him off topic. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about either his golfing or his best friend uh, author? Oh, so you guys know all about this because you get him to get oh, him talking yes. about in class. Well, huh? see for I know Devlin's who you're talking class, about. we didn't need to talk didn't about it. He didn't even have to get them <laughs> off topic. He would just he would just go off. Yeah. But for my class, it was back like, in the Civil War. But that reminds me, I used a nine iron on the thirteenth hole yesterday. No, he yeah. had a he had a book, Golfer Dummies. He wrote it, and he would plug himself to a bunch of seventeen year olds. Okay, we just told everybody this guy's name now because all I gotta do. No, that's Google. not the actual name of the book. Okay, good. It's thing. like. It's like he a, wrote like a he wrote it's a like golf book. He wrote a golf book. Yeah. You just called it golf for dummies. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like <laughs> I'm calling it, it golf for dummies because it's a stupid book. <laughs> yeah, the, no, he, no, really. How do you feel? No, don't. Hold <laughs> <it up. laughs> so, so for like being in a cohort, the teachers would 
treat us differently. But I was in a biology class with two other girls in my program and I would speak because I took biology freshman year of high school. I should have been in an honors class, but I wasn't. So I was the best student in that class. It took me a while. (laughs) No shame. No shame. (laughs) It took me a while to convince my teacher to let me transfer because I had to. It was a whole deal to get into an honors chemistry class the next year. (laughs) But I had already taken biology and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> honors, honors, honors. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> so going into the biology class and I talk just from prior knowledge, my teacher, she thought it was just impressive. And then figuring out that I was in pathways and that I was, I think at the time I was 16, I had like just turned 16. I'm one okay. of the youngest kids in the program. She was amazing. <laughs> Kieran is like one of the youngest kids in the program. What the hell? <laughs> Good. I think it's funny because uh, me and Amory, um, up till about sophomore year, before we both left, because I dropped out, you went in the pathways. Yeah. I, I quote unquote dropped out. I like saying dropped out because it sounds cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a self educated <laughs> learning school. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. But we were in the same. So yeah, because you didn't stop going to school. You're in college. No, now, yeah, so it wasn't like you like you're out. Like, I did uh, different school. I dropped me out of school in ninth grade. Yeah, never looked back. <laughs> uh, my my self educated learning teacher was like, "Don't say drop out." I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "But it sounds the, awesome." Makes me sound badass, man. <laughs> it does. Like I'm like I'm a rebel or something. <laughs> in in freshman <laughs> year, wearing leather. <laughs> you did. So, so I, I did. I have a leather jacket. I do. <laughs> <laughs> pretends to ride motorcycle okay fonzie yes i am bro i your jukebox isn't working just uh, let me know jukebox. She, my bad she just learned fonzie the other day by yeah. the way like <laughs> so but i get that cultural reference i get that one yeah really. and your back starts hurting <laughs> hey. so so me me and amber were in, in the same grade uh Choir. starting at third grade because I stayed back third grade <laughs> and then uh, continued through the grades. Yeah. And then sophomore year, it. <laughs> she goes off to college. Yeah. And, and you go off to self. Well. It's like everybody split. <laughs> she she left her junior year. I left mid sophomore year. Like, okay. I was like, peace out, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. This shit, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, that year we had the we We went to the same. We had the same chemistry class. And I remember because we sat next to each other. So she knows what I'm about to say. First thing she said to our chemistry teacher after she gave her speech about this is what this class is about and whatever. Emery was like, how do you swap out of classes? Because I want to be in an honors class. (laughs) I did that. Like, thank you. I don't want to be here. (laughs) Politely raising her hand. She's like, yes, I only have one question. How do you transfer? (laughs) Can I leave? Because I feel like I should be in an honors class. <laughs> I'm not good no. enough for you. I'm too good well, for you. <laughs> to be fair, the teacher was not the nicest because she would ask for, like, if we had nicknames. Yeah. My legal name is Erica. That's my first name. Amory is my middle name. She right. wouldn't let me go by my middle name. Okay. Which, if yeah. I had a nickname, that's different. That was different. So because if you told her that you go by your nickname, she'd have been okay with it. No, because a nickname it, is something that's like a sometimes so, like yeah, okay. for her nicknames was like a shortened first name. So if yeah. I was like, my name is Erica, but I go by Eric. Eric. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. she'd have been okay with that. But yeah. she was like, "Do you have a nickname?" I was like Amory, and she was like, "That's not a nickname. That's a different name. I'm not calling you that." And I was like, <laughs> "Are you kidding me?" Meanwhile, I'm next to her saying... should be your radio name, just Erica Amory. Hi, uh, it's yeah. Erica Amory. Good morning. Uh, doing weather and traffic and bitching about college professors. Uh, Hell yeah. What's going on with you teacher. today, Devlin? Go ahead. Yeah, for me, it was... Because uh, I was before Amory in that in that whole line. And I was like, oh, I'm I'm Dev. And she's like, yeah. okay, Dev. And Amory was like, I'm Amory. And she goes like, no. No. <laughs> Hard no. Well, that that, it, that wasn't even a, where's Amory from? It was a no. This is also the teacher that... I, uh, <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm laughing thinking about it because like, I, the only reason I passed that class air quotes was air, because he's doing air quotes. I'm sent I'm sitting next to uh, some people, and I'm like, yo, can I copy off your paper? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they were like, hell yeah, you can copy off my paper. You know what's sick is I got a higher grade than the person I copied off of. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, in the class or all, yeah, in the class we would both get our papers back, and he's like. Why did you get an 80 and I got a 76? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man, but thanks. Yeah, 
because you screwed up the copy, but it probably corrected his wrong answer by, <laughs> by answer. That's how you pulled it off. When they say change, no, because like so I didn't. Do you direct. get that the, the people that you're the people like like that coast through life like that, man, <laughs> infuriate. You're like you, you ruin it, man. And I, I love you for it because I did exactly the same shit all the way through high school. It's so funny. Like, it, <laughs> oh, that's so good. And uh, people hated me, man. They're no. like, like I never brought a pencil to class. I never brought paper. I, but this is there's this girl that I went to high school with. She sat behind me. I think it was in my uh, civics and economics class. So it was in my civics class. And um, because I told you guys, like, I never even bought a book. I never brought books, paper, pencils. And I, oh, we're going to have a test today. And I have to bump a pencil and a piece of yep. paper for the people in the classroom around me, right? I'm not recommending is, this as a way to gain an education, <laughs> by the way. Okay? I did that anyway. But I know you did. <laughs> no, I still do. I know you do. You should do Oh, God. That's, that's how we did finals this last semester. I walked into my English class and I was like, I leaned over to the table way across me. Hey, can I borrow a pencil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you're gonna be, you're like Van Wilder without all of the uh, the sex and alcohol. And <laughs> Hell without yeah, the cool stuff. I'm without cool, but cool not. Stuff, right? yeah, lame. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we've been doing this for an hour and a half. Um, I think we should uh, kind of wrap it up here. We're gonna do another one. Uh, uh, we, you know, we're gonna be here. We'll be hanging out, and I know Eric's gonna be coming in and doing a podcast sometime this week. So we're going to be doing some more shows, but I appreciate you doing this with me. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Would you Would you be willing to do it again? Hundred yes. percent. Will you That's let us awesome. out of your basement, <laughs> like while we're here? <laughs> out of the stu- this is not the basement. This is the studio. studio. This is the This is the No Shit Cast Studios. Uh, what What do we call it? Uh, Intellectual Caveman, right? Productions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Right? So you did the artwork for that, which, by the way. Uh, coming up here for our hundredth show, I was just reminded today that we had, uh, our intention is to <coughs> put together some t-shirts out after Devlin pukes on the mic. <laughs> we're gonna put together some like t-shirts and and stuff for the hundredth show, and then uh, we're gonna come up with some scheme to give those away to people. And uh, we're gonna try to do like a reunion thing, so we're gonna have some people that have been on uh, from the past again. I did it. We did it on our fifth. I think it was our fiftieth too, but we just didn't like give anything away. But now we're gonna actually put some. Like meat on the bone for it, so to speak. So get some free swag, everyone. You know what's a good idea? What's that? Do you have any old, older um, software? I mean, hardware that you don't use that you used to use? No, man, I use. Uh, it all. man, I was gonna say if you do, like for a future one, sign it and do a giveaway. Oh, that can be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, like if you get rid of one of these condenser mics or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, eventually that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move up and I'm going to standardize probably all shotgun mics. I'd like to get good headphones. So there's going to be some of this equipment I'm going to be sweet. Swa- like ATHs. Bro, you sound yeah. insane on these. Yeah. <laughs> these are my headphones. <laughs> Audio Technicas. Those are studio grade headphones. Yeah. So good. All right, folks. So we'll wrap it up there. We appreciate everybody listening. Check us out at www.noshitcast.com. It's K-N-O-W-S-H-I-T-C-A-S-T.com. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on uh, Instagram, Facebook. We're on iTunes, YouTube. Uh, give us some likes and subscribes. Uh, leave us a comment. If you're not a douchebag about it, I might actually read it on the air and give you a shout out, as I have in the past. And again, thanks for listening, everyone. We'll catch y'all next time. Bye. Bye.